Hi, I'm Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on complex numbers. We are looking into properties of modulus. Here we have nine test questions for you. You can actually pause the video, copy these questions, answer them, and then look into my suggestions. I hope you can see the first three. And now here are question number four and five. Have a note of these questions and then figure out their solutions. Question number six, seven, and eight are there for you. And then we have a very important question, question number nine. Let's solve these one by one. The very first question here is that if the modulus of a complex number z is equal to zero, then which of the following is true, right? So we are given four options. When we say modulus of z, right? So let's say z equals to a plus bi. In that case, the modulus of z is square root of a square plus b square, right? Now this can only be zero if both a and b are zero, right? So that means the imaginary and the real part both are zero and therefore option A is the correct option, right? Even if we have the negative value, the square makes it positive. So you don't really get a zero there. Perfect. Question number two is, which of the following is not true? Now, real value of a complex number is greater than or equal to minus of the modulus of z and is less than or equal to the modulus of z. Well, the real value here is a. As you can clearly see, it is always positive, so it is definitely greater than the negative value. On the other hand, the modulus has a positive b square attached to it, so modulus of z is also greater than that, so that is true. Same is, uh, uh, now let's look into the second part where we have modulus of minus z, z and conjugate. So let's see what is a conjugate, right? So the conjugate will be a minus bi and the conjugate modulus will also be square root of a square plus minus b square, correct? Which is same as square root of a square plus b square. So the conjugate is also same. So part B is also correct. Now in case of C, when you multiply the, the modulus of two complex numbers, then it is same as the product and then the modulus, right? And D is Z, Z bar equals to Z square. Well, this is definitely wrong since what is Z, Z bar? Well, Z, Z bar or modulus is basically square of the modulus of our complex number. But z square is altogether a different story, right? What is z square? z square will be a plus bi whole squared. You see that? So that is going to be z square, which is definitely not equal to the square of the modulus, right? So this is actually equal to a square plus b square. I mean, you write when you open this up, you get a square minus b square, since i square is negative 1, plus 2 abi. Now, this is not equal to a square plus b square. Perfect. And therefore, option D is incorrect. Question number 3 here is, we need to evaluate the value of 6 minus 8i over 1 plus i. All right. So, uh, the uh, the numerator is equal to what here? So the numerator here is square root of 6 square plus 8 square and the denominator is square root of 1 square plus 1 square which is that is 36 plus 64 which is square root of 100 and here we have square root of 1 plus 1 which is 2. Now that gives you uh, 10 over square root of 2 well, that is not the option, so we'll have to rationalize it. So once you rationalize, what you get is uh, 10 divided by, uh, I mean, square root of 2. 
So that becomes 10 square root 2 over 2 or is equals to 5 square root of 2. And therefore, option D is the right option. Correct. So that is how you could answer this particular question. Now let's take question number 4 and 5. Question number 4 here is that z1 plus z2 whole square, the modulus, is equal to which one of these expressions? Well, uh, we have a video on this where we have proved this identity. Well, this is an identity and you can always show that z1 plus z2 whole square is actually equal to part b, which is z1 absolute value square plus z2 absolute value square plus two times real value c1 z2 modulus, right? So that is the answer. For question number five, we have minus here and which one of these is the right option? You can pause the video answer this question. Well, I'll provide you with a link which shows that b is the right option for this particular question. The next one here is that we have z1 plus z2 whole square plus z1 minus z2 whole square. Well, when you get minus z2 square, you just add what you got in 1 and 2, you'll find that 2 real value of z1, z2 bar cancels. And therefore, in this particular case, the option here is 2 times z1 square plus 2 times z2 square. And option C is the correct option. Now these are very important rules which you should remember for the modulus of complex numbers. Now let's look into question number 7. We are given that the complex number z1 is 2 minus 4i and z2 is 3 plus 4i. You need to evaluate fourth power of ratio of the modulus of z1 and z2. Let's find what is z1 equals to, right? So z1 is equal to, let's say z1 squared is how much, let's square it. So square will be 2 square plus 4 square, right? So which is 2 square plus 4 square, that is 4 plus 16, that is 20, right? z2 square will be 3 square plus 4 square, which is 25, right? 9 plus 16, which is 25. We want to find the fourth power, right? That means... Uh, we want to find z1 over z2 uh, modulus. So this is modulus, right, to the power of 4. So that clearly should be uh, 20 over 25 to the power of 2, since it is the ratio of squares, right? So that gives you the answer as that is 4 over 5, and that is 16 over 25. Is that clear to you? Correct. So what we get? Here is option B. Perfect. So, so this is modulus square, I should have written clearly. That is the modulus square, which is 20 and 25. And when we do the ratio of these, we get 20 over 25. That's the square, right? And when you square it, you get the fourth power, and we get 16 over 25 as a result. Question number 8 z1 and z2 are given to you, you need to evaluate their product. Now their product is same as uh, the modulus of z1 square times the modulus of z2 square, right? So we get that result. Now in this particular case, we have almost the same complex numbers. Modulus of z1 square is 20, which we saw here, right? And the modulus of z2 square is 3 square minus 4 whole square, which is 25, right? So we get this answer, and that gives you 500, and therefore option C is the right option. Perfect. Now let's look into the last question, which is question number 9. Question number 9 is, find the possible value of n if 1 plus i over 1 minus i to the power of n is equal to 1. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Let's try to find what is the value of 1 plus i over 1 minus i, right? 
So we can actually realize this multiplying and dividing by the conjugate of denominator. So multiply and divide by 1 plus i over 1 plus i. So that gives me in the numerator 1 plus i plus i plus i square divided by in the denominator 1 plus i minus i minus i square correct so that gives you 1 and this is i square is minus 1 right so we get uh, 1 plus 2i minus 1 over here we get 1 and that i and minus i cancel so what we get is 1 minus i square is minus 1 right so we get 1 plus 1 here now so that gives you the numerator is 2i over 1 plus 1 is 2 and therefore this is equal to i is that clear to you right so that is very important to understand now once you do that our equation reduces to i to the power of n right so what we have here is 1 plus i over 1 minus i to the power of n equals to 1 we need to solve and we just saw that the inside bracket thing is just i right so we have i to the power of n is equal to 1. Now we have four options here 1 2 3 and 4 clearly we know that i to the power of 4 is equal to 1 and therefore option d is the right option i hope that makes sense feel free to write a comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos with that we come to an end of our worksheet where we have taken up these nine questions so i hope you understand and appreciate how to answer these questions the questions once again were So these were your first three questions, question number four and five, and then we took up question number six, seven, and eight. And the last question nine, is it clear to you? So that should help you to understand this topic fairly well. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.